yes, friendly people, Green Hills and Guinness. The travel guys are in, guess where? Ireland next. Did you hear me say Guinness? I did. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, I'm Jim Gordon. And I'm Darren Parkman. And we are the Travel Guys. Well, guess where we are this time. I'll give you a hint. Rolling Green Hills, delicious beer drinks, and the odd leprechaun or two. Uh, Ireland. Give that man a pint. We're in Dublin, to be exact. We're also going to visit New Ross, Kilkenny, and Waterford. We're going to go back in time to the 13th century and check out a very cool castle-like stone abbey. <laughs> We'll check out two of Ireland's most important drinks, <laughs> and those, of course, are Guinness and Smittix. And I don't want to shock our viewers, but we're going to get some exercise on a 25-kilometer bike ride along the scenic Waterford Greenway. I think I'm busy that day. <laughs> Hold on, a lot more coming up, so stick around, and thanks a million. sites of Dublin today. We're in a great place called The Landmark. One of the many, many pubs here. Yes. And in the spirit of being in Dublin and Ireland, uh, I've learned myself a, a, a new Irish folk song I'd like oh, to sing. Oh, God. Well, okay, please don't sing it. Say what now? You want me to sing it? No, I don't think that's what I said. I think I said The bus was don't. going by. Didn't you want me to sing it? No, no all right. That Get it out of like, your system. Who threw the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's chowder? Nobody spoke, so I shouted all the louder. It's an Irish trick, it's true, and I'll let them who threw the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's chowder. You know, I, like I, it. you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but that wasn't too bad. Again? <laughs> no, no, not who again. Who threw no, no. the overalls in Mrs. Murphy's chowder? Uh, Nobody spoke, so I shouted all the louder. Well, one of the most famous landmarks in all of Dublin has to be a little place, actually a huge place. <laughs> yeah, not a little place. <laughs> called the Guinness Storehouse, which is where we are now. Buddy, this is also a tradition with our show. Every time we have been in Dublin, this is part of the show. This is a must-stop, must-see stop for us in Dublin. You think our love of beer might have something to do oh, with it? Oh, yes, that? of course. Yeah, yes, yes. It. But no, but it's just great community. This is uh, just fabulous stuff. It's been almost 10 years since we've been here. And when in the Guinness factory, what are you going to do? Drink a little Guinness. Yeah. Well, when you're at the Guinness storehouse, it's always good to talk to an expert, I say. And we're here with beer specialist Ian, who hopefully is going to show us how to pull a proper pint. Let's talk about what is the perfect pint here at Guinness. Yeah, so when it comes to pouring a pint at Guinness, gentlemen, we do it in six steps. We take it very seriously here in For Dublin, sure. <laughs> and of course in Ireland. It's our national drink, so it's very important that it's served correctly. So first thing, cool, clean glass. 
if you're not sure if it's right for the beer, look for the name on the glass. We right. always recommend a branded glass. <laughs> and what you want to do then is you want to get a 45 degree angle under the tap. So uh, a lot of people kind of will go and pour straight does that away. Keep, keep the uh, carbonation down, the head down a little so bit? So Guinness isn't actually yeah. a carbonated beer, it's a nitrogenated beer. So the gas that goes into Guinness is a much smaller bubble, which creates that creamy texture on top. Oh, okay. So that's pretty much why the beer is That's why it's so light when you're drinking. You don't get you don't get bloated from the gas. It's actually a ah. smaller, smaller bubble. So if you pour it like that, too much air will get in gotcha. and you compromise your foam. Well, it's time to see who can pull the better pint. A bit of a contest between myself and Jim Gordon. Ready, Jim? Go. Ready, set, go. All the way down, Jim. Pull tap right in. Don't be afraid of it. Get that engine running in your beer. Straight <laughs> up your glass with plenty of time, gents. And then the middle of the golden heart, just flick the tap to the center. That's perfect, Jim. Yeah, excellent. All gentle, right. Gentle, gentle. So far, it's tied. And now we wait. All right. This is the hard part now. Nearly there, gentlemen. So push it, hold it up underneath the top and push You've it. Got right. a, per a perfect head on this sucker. Right to the brim. So you hold the glass straight. Stop. And stop. Perfect. Pop it down on the bar. We're not done just yet. We're not done yet. Ian, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Cheers. Well, I'm going to try this now. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Well done. You did a good job. So did you, sir. Oh, this is good. Ah, uh, tastes perfect. Yep. It tastes even better when you make it yourself, too, isn't it? <laughs> we have been here three times over the years. That's the first time they've ever done this. That is so cool. The technology is unbelievable. Yep. Our face is right there on the head of the pint. One, one mistake, our haggard faces. Yeah, I don't look too bad actually. No, well, I don't look too bad. I don't bad. look a day over seventy-three. Um, that is just incredible. Wow. How, how, how can they even do that? I it's, don't know. It's amazing. It's a perfect likeness of us, and I guess that's one of the attractions here at the Guinness Factory yeah, uh, that's Storehouse. You can yeah. do this. It's incredible. Oh, that's wild. Wow. I hate to drink it, but I'm gonna anyway. I don't even want to touch that. Actually, it's too perfect. One of the great things to see in Kilkenny, if not all of Ireland, is the Kilkenny Castle, which is beautifully located right in the middle of the city. This is gorgeous. The uh, castle really is in the heart of everything, though. It really is. And it's the jewel in the crown. It really yeah, is. It's Beautiful rolling crown. green hills behind us yeah. here. Uh, tell us about the history of this place. I mean, there's history everywhere in Ireland, but this place is special. I guess you could encapsulate it as the story of Irish princesses and Norman knights. So where we're standing today, if you were standing here before the castle was built, you'd be in what's known as the Kingdom of Ossory. And Ireland would have been divided up into about 200 kingdoms. <laughs> how, how long are we talking? We're talking like oh, the 12th century? We're, we're going back before, we're go before the 1100s, the 500s <laughs> on. So you would have had an indigenous Irish royal families within Kilkenny. There would have been a family called the Magilla Fadrigs that would have been central to uh, life in Kilkenny at that time. The actual castle itself really comes into its own with the arrival of the Normans. Just from your own viewer's perspective, Ireland is about the same size as Indiana geographically. <laughs> so you can imagine Indiana with 200 governors. It would Yikes. be mayhem. Yes, but trouble. These, these, these guys were continually fighting against each other for resources mostly. Now the kingdom adjacent to us here is called the Kingdom of Leinster, which is what the province is called today. And the King of Leinster in around 1160s, a fellow called Dermot McMurrah, had a big fight with the High King of Ireland. And this resulted in the High King of Ireland taking his title, throne and lands away from the King of Leinster. Now the King <laughs> of Leinster was furious as you can imagine. Now there was only one military power in this part of the world capable of restoring him back on the throne and at this particular point in time they're already running England for a hundred years. That was the famous Battle of Hastings in 1066. We've heard of that one. Castles so, like this are always seem to be uh, located in the highest point of the city. Is that always the yes, case? Yes, well yeah. you, you would have a great vantage point here, the River North. You can see your enemy coming. Certainly, you can yeah. see them coming for miles and also the way that when they built their castles they also put keeps 
outside, around the castle area, outside on their territories, so they would get an early warning if anybody was coming towards them. So you get a heads up as you guys. And, and can you explain <laughs> one go. thing that really surprised us when we came into this uh, this castle is the beautiful greenery over here. Yes. I mean, is it always is that been part like of the that? castle this, lands? Uh, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is our central park here in Kilkenny. So this is our, our largest municipal park. The butlers who would have been the last sort of residents in the castle, they were, uh, left in around 1959, and they ended up selling the castle to the city of Kilkenny. I think it was 50, 50 pounds at the time. They spent 50 pounds on it, the city took it over. Now, as long as I'm on this earth, they've been renovating this building. The actual castle itself today is more of a, a French chateau, and there would have been sort of major renovations and different developments of the castle throughout right. the years. The butlers now were the last ones to fix up the castle, and they went with sort of a French chateau type of castle. And the turrets, of course, that's where that's where they, uh, the weapons were, were used from the turrets, yeah, were they not? Well, yeah, yeah more look, I suspect lookouts. You can see some of the arrow slits. You see, they would have used... Oh, over there, yeah, nice? yeah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. They would have used those arrow Just slits. Just wide enough to shoot Just an arrow. Just wide enough yeah. to get an arrow out. Yeah, we appreciate you giving us a little thumbnail. John, thank you, sir. Not thank at you. All. Not as at as all. they say in Ireland, thanks a million. Oh, all right. Go on <laughs> Very good. When I die, I'll die drunk down in the street. You will count me out in ten and straight defeat. Wrap the starry flower around me. Let the pipers ear resound me. Here I rest until the Lord uh, of love on me. This is Amber. Hello, Amber. Hi, Amber. Jim and Darren. 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 Any chance you could pull us a pint? A couple of Guinness? What do you want? Guinness? Yeah. <laughs> Guinness, please. Yeah. I have them on. I see the dream is fixed. Cheers. You know, looking at castles is kind of thirsty work, isn't it? It really is. It is. So it is. Yeah. We're, we're remedying that right now. Is that a word, remedying? I think it is. But what's it's hard to say when you've had a pint. We're the only guys on television that actually take their guide from something historical to a pub. That's so right. We're having ourselves David. a pint right John's now. John's over here we, now. <laughs> we have another expression we use here in Ireland when we have an awful thirst on us. We say we have a terrible droop. A terrible ah, droop. A, a terrible droop. A terrible droop. Hey, drooch. tell us, this is your one of many, I, I, I take like it, that. one of many great places that you like to come to. Tell us where we are right now. We're in my favourite pub in Kilkenny. It's Tynan's Bridge House Bar, and I've been coming to Tynan's Bridge House Bar probably for the last 45 years. And seven wow. days a week, pretty much, eh? Ah, uh, my budget doesn't stretch <laughs> to seven <laughs> days a week. It's just, just weekend warrior. I was just there. guessing. Um, yeah. But we're, we're kind of just in the outer part of the bar, but tell us what we got behind here. Yeah, yeah there's, there's like, what is this, actually. spice racks behind yeah. us? Or? So, yeah. uh, in an awful lot of Irish bars, they would have uh, functioned as a corner store or a variety store, as well as being a pub. So you could come in here and get your milk, or as you see, uh, with the beautiful woodwork behind us, you can get citron and mace and ginger and spices and different things. So it was half pub, half shop. Right. So I guess it's it's the best way to beat the economy, right? You've got two businesses in one already. The depth. You don't have to go far, and you, you, you don't have to. And go you can far. buy your spices while you're drinking Guinness. Yeah, yeah. We don't just get guides for history. We get guys that have a little more depth. They know mm. bars, pubs, spices for some odd reason. Cheers, sure, John. Uh, this is serious stuff to be done here. Mm. between Kilkenny and Waterford is the Jerpoint Glass Studio where we are now. Of course, Waterford is famous the world over for glass and uh, we're going to have the glass experience today. <laughs> glassy, okay. Your, your eyes are looking a bit glassy. A little glassy this morning, is yes. That, is that from Guinness or Smittix? No, it's all about the fresh air I got yesterday. Okay. So I'm heating just the rim here now yeah. and then I put it in to heat the whole of these. Back out and just heat the rim. I think the rim is hot enough now that I can open it up. Friend, are you ready to make some genuine hand-blown glass? I'm ready for you to make some genuine hand-blown glass. 
You're ready for me to make some genuine hand blown. I Bias. am. You've got a lot of hot air, so I'm ready to see that put to work. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Before hand starts moving down here, it's going to get very hot. I see that. <laughs> Especially down there. So what I need you to do now is using all of your fingers and thumbs, yep. try and turn the iron at about this kind of speed. Nice and calm, nice gentle movement. There you go. Point it down. And there you go. Yeah, up a little. F fairly level. There you go. About there, right? All right. Nice and gentle. I'm going to gather some glass, yep. and I'm going to bring this back down, and you're going to do it with some glass on it. Let's do it. You can grab it there, okay? and just start turning nice and gentle. How do you and feel you about the... see that the piece is starting to go off center like I that? I do, yeah. Point it up and <laughs> ah, I see, yeah. Wow. There's he's a, a trick. He's a little off center. There's a trick to this. It sure it is. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shape it a little bit. All right. And I'm going to pop it in a small bubble in there. Okay. Oh, that's a little air gun, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. Uh, Pressure there to right. use for pulling the glass. Okay, so you can start by blowing nice and gentle. Go ahead. Uh, wow. Go again, about the same. More, bit more, bit more, bit more. Okay. Wow. Now, as hard as you can for as long as you can, and then take a breath and go again. You're going red. Go on, take another breath and go again. <laughs> that's great. All right, well done. I think that's pretty much nice. Uh, that's that's great. Not, that's not like so bad at all. Wow. wow. I just made that big giant bowl slash wine glass. What yep. are you going to make here at the glass factory? I'm going to make apparently something called a snowflake. That was your nickname in high school, wasn't it? And college. <laughs> yeah, they used to say, here comes Snowflake. Remember that? <laughs> All right. Good luck, Snowflake. All right, here we go. Oh. Hit the middle. I'll do. That's not too bad. Well, that's not too good either. Though, it? in the middle. <laughs> That's not centered. It's not centered at all. But if you left room, because I'm going to put a little indentation there. Okay. And tomorrow I'm going to drill a hole in that, and then you can hang it off your Christmas tree. That's true. Excellent. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Wow, nice job. So I did do a good job. You did a great wow. job. Fox Road, guys, test all go here. Tasula gum, go make to Tatnavasta Taurus. What does that mean? That means welcome, travel guys, to Ireland. I hope you enjoy your trip. Gora Mahagud. That means thank you in Gaelic. Well done. It's our driver, John. Well, we go from the uh, Jerpoint Glass Studio down the road a few kilometers to the Jerpoint Abbey. Everywhere in Ireland is so steeped in history. This building is pretty impressive it behind is, us here. Yeah. This structure, I guess we'd call it. Uh, and a uh, fun fact for you, back in the 1200s, 36 monks and 50 lay brothers lived inside this building. 12th century. <laughs> wow. You know what a lay brother is, by the I way? I do not, no. Nor do I. Let's check it out. This abbey is, I guess, a thousand years old, and in front of us are these ancient crypts of monks, I guess, yeah. and uh, don't they remind you of Egyptian sarcophaguses? They look yeah. just like them, yeah, wow. I, I, it sounds kind of obvious to say this, but you remember noting we got here, like this, the, 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 the workmanship on this place, it's, as you said, it's a thousand years old. Look at the brick is still here. Look it's at the carving on this, yeah. this crypt. Wow, so detailed.
So if you live in a town with a brewery, uh, like I grew up in here in Kilkenny, that's a smell that legitimately fills the air. My dad worked here for 32 years, my uncles work here, my brother worked here, I worked here, a couple of cousins worked here. That's kind of a smell of everyday life growing up in Kilkenny. There's a huge history behind Smittix. Am I saying it right, Smittix? You are, yeah. Don't say on. Smithwicks. <laughs> no, it's... Only uh, the uncool kids <laughs> say Smithwicks, right? No, it's, uh, it's, it's really down to the Irish accent. Smittix. Uh, yeah, Smittix. So uh, the W is kind of almost not there at all. And I'm enjoying one of the... Fla this is the flagship beer here, is it, it is. not? It be what we uh, be our go-to. If you go to most bars in Ireland, ask for a pint of Smittix. That's what time That's what you get. Now, I'm going to have a big squig of this uh, delicious Smittix. And when I do, give us a real thumbnail history of the company, if you could. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, so Smittix itself has a history that dates back a little over 300 years. All right, steady started, there, steady on. Uh, <laughs> started by a gentleman by the name of John Smittix. Uh, it actually had to be fronted by a Protestant <sighs> business partner down to the fact that John, as a Catholic, couldn't legally own the business. The family ran it for nine generations out of mainly this building that we're in right now, uh, turning Smittix, uh, I suppose, in the 1700s from small and local, 1800s nationally branded, and by the 1950s. And what, what about the Kilkenny Vietnam. connection? There's a real... Yeah, the, the Kilkenny beer. Yeah. Yeah, so Kilkenny beer is an unusual one. It actually started its life as Smittix Export uh, ah. back in the 1970s. It was eventually renamed Kilkenny because of the pronunciation of Smittix. It's big in our country, Canada. <laughs> it, it does, it does very well in our country. Canada. I yeah. think, uh, mm -hmm. believe it, uh, it was actually originally imported in 1990. By 1993, it was the biggest selling export ale in Canada. Hey, tell uh, our viewers about the experience they can have here when they take the tour. Yeah, so we have tours that run uh, an average of about 40 to 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. They're fully guided uh, with uh, our trained staff. The guide that would take you on the journey takes you through the history of not only the family who ran the site, uh, not even just about the actual production of the beer, but even right back about 700 plus years ago to when the site was originally founded by a group of monks <laughs> who were Ireland's <laughs> first brewers. You don't, you don't put monks with beer normally, but <laughs> what the in, heck. Well, in Europe. It's an easy drinking beer and the carbonation is low, is it not? Yeah, it's actually the red ale you're drinking right now is poured with a 50-50 split of nitrogen and CO2. It gives it that nice silky. Wow. Thank you very much, Simon. Cheers. Simon, it's always been my dream to ring the Smittix bell. Could I do that? Absolutely. Multiple times? <laughs> yes, go. Cool. Good. Okay, I'm going to ring the Smittix bell now. Excellent. Okay, you let me know when you're ready. Okay, I'm ready now. Okay, go. you don't want to cover your ears? You're good? Okay. No, I like the ear bleeding loud noise. Okay, okay we got some Smittix here. Come and get it. Okay, right, that, that's, that's okay. Again? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's more than one, one more time? Uh, okay, my own ears are hurting now. Okay, cut him okay. off. All right. Uh, this is fabulous beer. Um, how did you get this? What's one? Of, you know what this is? What? You don't know what it is, do you? Well, I have an idea what it is. I'm asking how you got it's it. It's a paddle of beer. Uh huh. Okay. You know how boats have paddles? Uh, well, this is yeah, a beer paddle. Just, just want to. I'm not saying you should ever boat and drink, though. That's wrong. No. But this is a beer paddle, and we got uh, a couple of different types of Smittix here. It's so smooth mm -hmm. compared to North American beer. It really is. Yeah, I like this. We're not leaving here anytime soon. Play the wild rovers, no more. Well, it's no name. Well, about uh, 45 minutes from Kilkenny, we find ourselves in a very cozy town called New Ross, uh, buddy. <laughs> very cold and rainy town, too. You yeah. know what? I tell you what, it's not going to dampen uh, our excitement to see some of the history here. But yeah, it's fall in Ireland, it's raining. That's right, it's not dampening we our spirit. We, uh, yeah. we come from rain. We do come from rain, Vancouver, yes. Vancouver, yes. We anyway. come from rain. We're rain people. Uh, but a lot of history in Ireland. Uh, this town is no different. We're on board an authentic replica of a famine ship from the 1800s. And these are the ships where the first Irish ships uh, came over to America. Yeah, 1840, this is the uh, Dunbrody experience. And again, raining outside, but not dampening our, ex our enjoyment <laughs> of being on this thing. Isn't that cliche again? I like that. That's twice in one stand-up. I'm very excited to be on the ship despite the rain. Oh, buddy, uh, this is just amazing. You can come and check this out. You it's get a tour cool. of the whole place. It's fabulous. And there's more than this in this town, history-wise. Oh, it is, check yeah. That out. yeah. 
Well, i got to say, the interior of the ship really does give you that claustrophobic feeling, yeah, doesn't it? It really does, yeah. This is when the uh, 19th century immigrants had to actually come over in one of these ships. And yeah. It's like a here. prison. Yeah, it's it really is. Yeah. You're eating, you're living, you're sleeping all in this area here. Yeah. Remarkable. It doesn't look too fun. It does not. Boy, again, <laughs> all for a better life. Many people were sick and the cops had been But when I here was born, I said to David, we've got to go. Husband, we've got to go. Someplace else has got to be better than this. We're always hungry. We're always cold. And we're often wet and sick, says I to him. But when Anne was born, David knew we had to go. We could not bear to bury another child. Back in the summer of 1963, then President John F. Kennedy came to New Ross to pay tribute to his ancestors because he was the fourth generation buddy living in America. And what a great statue. And you can see his hand here is discolored. The finish is yeah. worn off because you're meant to come here. It's good luck and shake hands with the president. Nice to meet you, Mr. President. You know what's cool too? He said uh, in a speech here, he said he could have easily been a bartender had his ancestors not come to America. He pointed at a bar across the street yeah. and said he could have been a barman yeah. had he not been president. Yeah. Exactly. Well, we now find ourselves a couple hours away from Dublin in the historic town of Waterford. Buddy, I... What, what activities are we going to do? You got it all lined up for us. What are you... We're going to walk around, check out some of the history, drink in the culture. Drink in the culture? Maybe check a little more that, uh, that tower behind us there. There's history everywhere, cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're about to go medieval right here in Waterford. Oh, wow, that's a great, uh, great line. Clever, wasn't it? Really good. Thank you. Yes, while in Waterford, one of the things you got to check out is the Medieval Museum, which we're going to do right now. Well now, buddy, we're in the wine vault of the former mayor of Waterford, James Rice. This is a 15th century room. Very cool, kind of claustrophobic in yeah. here almost. Now these kegs here, is there still wine in them? No, there's not. Well, they say wine is great aged, so it's worth no, maybe not checking. this old, actually. Maybe not 500 <laughs> years aged, no. Wow, it's actually pretty amazing that this, uh, the roof of this wine vault has not collapsed, but uh, that's the original wicker holding the roof up there. Oh, just didn't even look up there. It keeps the mortar from coming through, I guess, oh, the wicker. Wow. wow. This, is, you know, this apparently is the best example of this type of roof in Ireland. And it's still sturdy <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> Well, now we're just walking into the uh, the priest's hall, which is pretty much underground here. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is 13th century we're standing in right now. They actually have weddings in here and other functions. Looks like a movie set, very yeah. cool looking. Well, we're now standing in front of some of the earliest and most important documents in Irish history. This is just stunning. This is the Great Charter Roll, buddy, 1372. And it's just all beautifully pieced together. They jokingly call it the first PowerPoint presentation. Kind of is like one, isn't yeah, it? It is, yeah. Now, now, it's printed on vellum, and that's King Edward III, one of the first images of him right there. Wow. Right next to the medieval museum is the Christchurch Cathedral, and we are here now looking at a very unusual skeleton-like tomb. That's very cool. Now, we saw his wine room, basically, right. his wine vault. Tell us about former yeah. mayor and a man who was on a pilgrimage. It's James Rice? James Rice. Yes. He was 11 times mayor in the 15th century of the city. Why is it in the image of a skeleton? Because he was trying to warn people to kind of repent for their sins before they died. And he says that in the inscription around that you're going to be like this one day, repent for your sins. <laughs> And this is the shroud oh. then is, is left open, is pulled back to show the, the partially decomposed and, and, cadaver. And there's a, a toad? A toad, yes, and there's worms on it. And the, the worms and the toad are meant to represent sins. And of course, the whole idea was to ask people to live good lives. He was a very religious man. And his preserved skeleton's actually inside oh, yes, this tomb. Yeah. And a cockle shell in there where, where it was a um, scallop shell where all pilgrims to the tomb of St. James got a, a scallop shell. Very scary looking, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's the finest example in Ireland. Well, sir, are you up for a uh, little game of medieval chess? Not really. Um, so that's a yes. Yeah, apparently, yeah. <laughs> okay, let's do it. All right, here we go. I'm going to make the first move. Yep, you know, Checkmate. Uh, Checkmate. That was quick. I don't, over. I don't even think that's legal, actually, what you just did. <laughs> Thank you. 
Buddy, we're halfway through this uh, wonderful bike ride. The electric bikes are helping. This really is the rolling green hills of Ireland if you look uh, at the scenery along the way. This is just an amazing ride. We've seen some great scenery along the way and still more to come. Now that was a ride, sir. What, about 20, 25 kilometers, would you say? 25 kilometers. Uh, um, it, it's been great, though. It has. This has been spectacular. We've seen so much spectacular scenery in that 25 kilometers. Uh, we really have behind us, by the way, is the Irish Sea. Yeah. Wow. What, we've, what we've been doing. Something you really want to do if you're in the Waterford area, and that's to check out the Waterford spectacular greenway. It's just a great ride. We shouldn't say to disappoint our viewers, but this is on, on electric bikes. So. I wasn't <laughs> using the electricity, though. It's no, just, of course you were. my lake power. <laughs> Well, we've had a great time on the Emerald Isle, but before we leave, as we always do, let's check out Jim and Darren's top five coolest things about our trip to Ireland. Uh, number five. It's gotta be exploring the history of Kilkenny through Guinness goggles. Yes, that's beautiful. Is that, is that a term, Guinness goggles? Thanks, this man right here. Is, John, yeah. thank you. Number four. Taking in a thousand years of Irish history here at Jerpoint Abbey. Number three. It's got to be blowing glass at the Jerpoint Glass Studio. A lot of air in there. Look at this thing I made here. <laughs> what is it, by the way? Number two. It's finally having our faces immortalized on the head of a pint of Guinness. The wonders never cease. The technology is amazing. I'm still coming down from the high oh. of this. I am. I'm still I don't want to drink that. It's, wow. It looks too good. And the number one coolest thing about our trip to Ireland. It's got to be surviving our 25 kilometer cycling trek along the Waterford Greenway. We'll see you on the next episode of The Travel Guys. Digging that bell, aren't you? I'm digging this bell. While in Kilkenny, The Travel Guys stayed at the Pembroke Hotel. Follow your soul, it knows the way. And in County Waterford, the Faith Lake Hotel. It's rare to find a place like Faith Lake. Also, the Granville Hotel at Meagher's Key, Waterford. And in Dublin, the Ivy Gardens Hotel. Modern luxury in the heart of Dublin. Post-production services by First Anniversary Pictures. We're not committing a sin. We're not drinking in church, but actually this really is a church from the 1200s. Believe but, it or not, it was originally in Wales and they brought it here brick by brick and reassembled it. It's very cool. It's in the middle of a modern yeah. bar uh, lounge kind of nightclub. It's I, feel, I feel kind of guilty drinking beer in here. Yeah, and I like being this yeah. tall. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> What am I, 4'11 here? I know, this is the real height difference, actually. Yeah, it yes, really yes, is. yes, yes. All right.